Concerning the development of notes, long notes, big notes, volume, producing color in the beginning, color on the ongoing note, and mixing with the next note or continuing with the next note, it, that, that those are other, other demands uh, which I quite... I'm, actually, I must admit, I'm scared of those things <laughs> because I want to do well and I'm working for it. But at the moment of now you have to function, you have to depend on yourself, you have to depend on your material, on your instrument and on the mood and how the atmosphere is and all that. When you play, for example, the Beethoven A major sonata beginning, which shows an, a beautiful G string, but it starts right away with a shift going up, dangerous, and it might be a wolf on that E. Every cellist has the problem, E, F or F sharp, there is a wolf living. But if you go over the strings, it has no expression. It's so you, you have to, we have to deal with making a shift going on to the F sharp and then going down again, G string, and then turning towards the, a, the, the C string when you finish that, that motif. And I need different colors for certain notes. When I begin this piece, I start with an A. Like, so it's a beginning, it's a bow beginning, it's a bow change. And there's a heavy note, it's a beginning, and then come back to that note and close the phrase. And it comes also with the bow change, but with an up bow. And this has a different sound, or I want a different sound than this. The beginning. Sound note that it's closing and again with an A, but on the C string, and it's coming out of legato. So with 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 a good string, I can fulfill the the, the, the musical architecture of that place. It's not just hitting the notes right and play them in themselves, just kind of beautiful. They have to build a line. They have to build a house or a castle, whatever you you see in this line. So yeah, did beginning. which is reverberant and warm and, and bloomy in sound somehow. But the beginning is... A so with those things I, I, I make music, I make a phrase. This is my fingering, my idea of playing that. Somebody has a different finger, a different idea. He uses different colors, different bow changes, whatever, different kind of vibrato. And I can depend on the strings that they do it, what I, what I want. Beginning of the Kodai Opus 4 Sonata, it's also a very uh, delicate beginning for sound because it's, it's cello starts solo and it also comes from nothing actually. And I need to depend that the string speaks, like, like I show you. I make this in my hand because I have to stretch, I don't want to make shift. So I need to... talk and play.
convention because I go on. comes in with a beautiful melody line so I think it, it's all on the on the low string it going up to the A string a little bit aggressive and 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 then I go back to that very mellow dark sound beautiful sometimes it's a kind of a stiff sound like I said it's kind of stiff it's not because the string is stiff or my bow is stiff it's because I want that sound and then uh, can add this right away if I want to change that. And the string gives me all that possibility. So I think this is very valuable that that can happen. A another passage where we need a, a lot of gutsy sound and all going over all the registers is the beginning of the Brahms double concerto. It's a big cello solo, so it's a big tutti in the beginning and then nothing. Ding, bum, bum, the orchestra's playing, and then da 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 boom, and then, okay, cello play. So, a... so I have to match to the big orchestra, and so I'll try to play big, and, but play cello, don't force the sound. <laughs> Not, not very pl pleasant fingery, finger uh, placements there. Like an octave, you have the stretching and the sound is very easy, stiff. And so I need a good string, which is reverberant for me, which is, gives me kind of pedal sound. And especially here, the, the pizzicatos. It is. We arriving um, with double stop. Same but Arco, Arco. Here comes the same in pizzicato. So it has to sound good. The next one should be louder. And with the pizzicato and finishing the solo and match with the winds coming in. So kind of very modest go, go uh, behind yourself and try get the orchestra playing again. 
the beginning of the last movement is the same importance somehow, but with squeaking short notes danger again. So da ya pa pa da da di 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 dim. There's one ascending fifths, and then the, the, the phrase goes down, and it's a relaxed theme actually. So. But again, the danger of squeaky notes very, very high, especially when same notes. And then comes the violin, and the violins don't have that squeaky problem because the coordination between right and left hand also, if the left hand is not really pressing down the string and the bow comes, the, the sound is not ready, even if the string is good. <laughs> so the technique also has to be good, so they have to be, the left hand has to be before the bow. So. <laughs> Very delicate, but music is fantastic. So what else can I show? Shilomov by, by Bloch again. Big sound, all the strings involved in the beginning, with where I need a very, very good development of sound. It starts with an A. Shilo, uh, uh, Bruch, uh, Bloch, he writes an accent on the first A, and then a crescendo, decrescendo, and then comes the orchestra with a very beautiful chord. And I have to react to that chord when I go on. But before, I have to bring one note to a life with an accent, make it broad as much as possible. He writes mezzo forte, so that you don't really know where it has to go to, but the note has to live, actually. It has to start and then it's blooming up and closing in the sound and expecting the orchestra coming in and then developing it from, from there. It's a famous beginning for playing just an A, which we have a lot of responsibility for. Mm -hmm. 